As we all know, you can't be a great head chef if you can't leave the kitchen. I mean, you can be an absolute beast on the line, but if you can't step up to the plate when the spotlight is on, then you simply won't have what it takes to lead a Gordon Ramsay Michelin star restaurant. And while most chefs haven't even had the chance to prove their leadership skills throughout the years, other chefs have completely crashed and burned when they got their chance to leave the kitchen, to the point where it likely cost them a quarter of a million dollars. What's going on guys? I'm Flint Masters, and today, we'll be taking a look at five times Hell's Kitchen contestants completely crashed and burned as leaders. Whether it came at the pass on finale night, a time where it's obviously critical to shine, or a chef stood up to the plate to take control of their team, only to fail big time, these chefs on paper should have dominated as leaders, but just simply caved with the spotlight on them. Before we begin, if you love Hell's Kitchen and want to see more videos like this, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as this is the place to be if you love short and long form HK content. With all that said, let's get this fire going, cause chefs are about to crash and burn. Bloody hell, here I go again. In the season 4 premiere, Chef Ramsay wanted to see right away who had what it took to be a potential leader, and instructed the teams to choose a captain for the night. The red team chose Vanessa, simply because she had the best signature dish, while Bobby begged and pleaded to be the captain for the blue team, as he was convinced he could do it. And well, safe to say, both these two would crash and burn big time, to the point where they even gave up their captain badges in the middle of service. Now we gotta redo the result of what's coming. So confused. Come on in, Vanessa. Wakey, wakey, get a grip, yes? We're all a bunch of blind monkeys trying to run around in the kitchen, and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, come on. Roseanne, can you take control? Yes, chef. Vanessa, get the captain's badge off your f***ing arm, will you? Roseanne, away. I sucked as a captain. It was pretty bad. I could have ran the appetizers, cold salads, meats, but I, you know, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I didn't want to make them feel stupid. As long as you're sitting pretty, right? That's your game, no, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. I just don't want to dig in over there. There's yes. too many people. How about a little vote of confidence, a little bit of support? Jump in there, Bobby. Jump in there, hey, baby. I'm, I'm, I don't want to jump in. You guys, you guys got it over there. I don't want to join the chaos. He's the captain. I mean, to just be like, yeah, I don't want to get in this chaos, that's basically like saying, you know, I quit. Hey, you, take that badge off. Give it to that little <laughs> over there. Thank God someone's got a pair of balls. Lou Ross can have that captain's position. I'm still a general. He's still, to me, he's still a private. Vanessa continued to struggle after this poor outing up until her injury, while Bobby was nearly sent home first night after the team unanimously nominated him for his horrendous leadership. And while he would survive and go on to make it to the Black Jackets, I do always wonder if one of the main reasons why he didn't stay over Jen at the Final Five goes all the way back to this episode 1 performance, as Chef Ramsay already knew at that point that Bobby didn't have what it took to be a leader, hence there was no reason to keep him around. Either way, there's no doubt how bad of a look this was for Vanessa and Bobby, to the point where they may have even lost their chance of winning the season right out the gate. Let's cut the bull****. Did you do a good job as a captain? Yes or no? No, sir. First time you give me a straight answer since you've been here. One of the best decisions Hell's Kitchen has ever made was adding a charity night dinner service midway through the season instead of just a normal service. This gives Ramsay a chance to see the leadership potential of chefs much earlier than the final four or three, thus giving chefs who are on the chopping block due to their amount of dinner service mistakes a chance to shine. A perfect example of this comes from the final eight dinner service of Rookies vs. Veterans. The two people who were most on thin ice on the red team, if not the entire competition, were Trev and Jose. Both had been up for elimination multiple times, had made a plethora of mistakes, and the other six chefs had proven themselves far more than these two when it came to the services and challenges. So this was their time to prove themselves as a potential head chef when it came time to lead their course. And while Trev came up clutch, arguably having the best course of the night with the carbonara, Jose's time at the pass running the veal course, the main entree dish of the night, didn't go smoothly. Eight. Eight minutes is good. Are you sure? No. You, uh, come on. Let's go ten. Ten? ten. Let's go. I mean, let's go eight then. Eight is good. Eight minutes, let's go. Eight minutes. Fire. Two, so, two minutes. Jose, are you happy with that? Yes, chef. Go. Oh my gosh, mine is completely raw. See, this is what you would call raw. Yours is raw. Oh, yours is raw. Oh, no. Red team, come here. Yes, chef. Oh, f no. Jose, did yes, you check? Chef. Most of them, I didn't oh. open them up. Oh no. Oh my god. No. No. Mourinho. Oh, there's more coming back. Oh, oh the old f no. No, 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 no. Oh my god. 
What's important to add here is that despite Trev having an awesome leadership performance, his nights on the line sucked, making multiple mistakes, and had arguably been weaker than Jose throughout the season. However, when it came down to the two of them for elimination, Ramsey spared Trev over Jose, as this service proved that Jose didn't have what it took to lead the kitchen, and Ramsey saw no need in keeping him around. Hence, proven why Charity Night is so important, as in any other situation, Trev would have likely been the boot here, but his great leadership saved him over Jose's train wreck leadership performance. Your lack of leadership on your course that you own confirms that you are not ready to be my head chef in Las Vegas. On a night when it should have been Hell's Kitchen giving back to some amazing charities, it was charities that ended up giving back Jose's raw veal. One of the most infamous times the chef completely crashed and burned when it came to leading their kitchen comes at the final eight of season 10. Kimmy was a very passionate chef from the southern state of Tennessee. And let's just say she was very proud of her southern culture. Why did you choose a flour tortilla over a corn tortilla? I'm from Memphis, so we eat a lot of flour stuff. I don't know how to dance. I'm from the south. We bounce in the south. We don't, we don't do this little slow stuff i mean we get down in the south but i'm from the south that's what we eat all the time i was getting down with this choir i'm from the south so just seeing that brought me back home kimmy you look at home oh that was so at home right there everybody loves my grits they're just amazing like how can you say no to grits from a southern bitch so when the final eight dinner service was announced to be southern night this was literally the perfect time for kimmy to shine as this service was made for her Seriously, did the producers plan this Southern Night in advance, or did they change it at the last second just for the memes? Either way, all eyes were obviously on Kimmy, as possibly no chef in Hell's Kitchen history had more of an advantage and background when it came to a certain dinner service menu. Not only should she do well, but she should absolutely lead her team to victory. Burn. Kimmy! Oh, let's burn that. Yes, let's chef. Burn. Got you in three minutes, chef. We gotta bring it. If not, we're screwed. Come on, guys. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, Jesus. Stop! Come here, you. Let me show you something. I've got raw, raw f catfish there, and there's burnt there. You, 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 you. Get out! You're a disgrace. It was supposed to be Kimmy's time to shine. Like, oh, I don't get it. I don't understand. Mm. After this atrocious performance, Ramsey had no choice to eliminate her over Robin, despite that being her first time up for elimination. But honestly, even if Kimmy wasn't nominated, I don't think Ramsey could have forgiven this performance, as this service was literally designed for Kimmy to shine. And not only did she crap the bed as leader, but she had her worst service of the season. I wonder what the Southern slang for completely choking under pressure is. But it's all my fault because I'm from the South, right? And I know there's a lot on my shoulders because I'm from the South. At number two is definitely the most heartbreaking crash and burn in Hell's Kitchen history, and that is John's Final Four Pass performance in Season 11. As we all know, the Season 11 Blue Team is one of the worst teams ever, with John being one of its only standouts, and the only male to make it to the Black Jackets that season. Not only was John talented, but the dude was beyond genuine, and one of the most likable chefs to ever enter Hell's Kitchen. And due to this never say die attitude despite his unlucky circumstances, pretty much all fans were rooting for him to win. Unfortunately, his winning chances completely fell to the wayside after he had what many fans think is the worst pass performance in Hell's Kitchen history. Listen up, six top. Two bass, two lamb, two wellington. One, no pork. Thank you. Run me through the ingredients of the wellington. No, there's no pork in the wellington. Prosciutto? Oh, there is prosciutto on that, so how the hell are we going to do that? Oh, why is he f***ing Yes, you? that's true. Get him over. They're already pre-rolled. You want us to what? Break one open and take out the prosciutto? Are you serious? Happy with that? Yes, I am, sir. Stop. What taste happened? that. I want you to taste that. Taste what? Taste the scallop. Oh, are you kidding me? It's not even a scallop. No, it's no, not. It's, it's, it's a fish. Yeah, that's right. Lamb is raw. Now we've lost control. And you got raw lamb garnish and it's happening sure. and right now you're letting it because there are four sections doing what the f they want to do right now we don't know what's going on like what are we fired on how long like we need a leader 
To this day, I wonder what happened to John, as he had shown signs of being a great leader at points throughout the season, especially during the end stretch, but for some reason, he just didn't get the job done when it mattered most. And what sucks even more, is that had John even been decent, he more than likely makes it to the final two, and is the frontrunner to win at that point, whether he goes up against Janelle or Mary. Despite this unfortunate collapse, John will forever remain a Hell's Kitchen legend, but man, if only he could have pulled off the impossible. I have nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I guess in the end, even I couldn't survive the curse of the blue team. Damn, it would have felt good to be in that last two, though. At number one is easily the most satisfying collapse in Hell's Kitchen history, as it couldn't have happened to a bigger douchebag. Russell Cook is infamous in the HK community for his insanely rude behavior to his teammates and overall bullying attitude. Unfortunately, he was the favorite to win heading into the finale, as Nona had been super inconsistent all season compared to Russell. But luckily, Russell's arrogance caught up to him at the absolute worst of times, as he objectively had the worst finale performance in Hell's Kitchen history. Not only was his kitchen unorganized, but he also made the Balfin decision of sending a 4 and 3 at the same time. Russell, are you sending a 4 and a 3 at the same time? Yes, sir. In the history of Hell's Kitchen, I'm going to send a four to three at the same time. Runner, please. Let's go. I'm in too, man. Unfortunately, some of it is being rapidly returned. Russell, you cannot do that. Russell, just two seconds from me now. Look at me. LA Market doesn't run like this. One table at a time, yeah? Yes, chef. But the worst part about Russell's night unsurprisingly came from his aggressive attitude and tanked him any shot of ever winning. After Rob struggled for Russell all night, instead of taking control like a good leader would, Russell unbelievably got right into Rob's face. Get some veg stuff. Do Don't veg just stand there and look around. Come on. I got it, man. It's right here, where are you going? Dude, I'm Come trying over to here, cook, since he can't do it. Come on, no, this is my day. Get over here, Jillian. I'm nervous. This this is not a good situation at all. You better move out of the way, bro, because I'm about to slap the out of you, bitch. Step back. Work Step back. Up. Hey, hey. Don't touch me. Don't, 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 touch, me. don't touch me. Hey, hey. Don't touch me. Don't, 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 don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh no! While Russell continues to crack the whip in his kitchen. Bring it to me, come on! Seriously, there's a big difference between leadership and flat out being unprofessional, and the way Russell treated his chefs that night would make any brigade feel unsafe, not to mention the service in general was a disaster. Unsurprisingly, this cost Russell a quarter of a million dollars and a head chef spot at LA Market, one of the most satisfying moments in Hell's Kitchen history. Vinny, six beef on order all day. Six beef. Don't screw me, Vinny. Russell's whole goal was to like push everything out really, really fast. He's expecting miracles. Make sure it's seared and ready to go. It's unrealistic expectations. Russell is a douchebag. Thank you guys so much for watching this video of the biggest leadership collapses in Hell's Kitchen history. If you enjoyed it and want to see more videos like this, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below of some other instances where chefs completely choked under the pressure. With all that said, take care everyone and I'll see you next time. Get out of there.